Sutra, the world systems of the ten directions are innumerable. In a single thought, he pervasively travels to them without exception, benefiting living beings and making offerings to the Buddhas. At the Buddha's places, he asks about the profound meanings. He thinks of all thus commons as a father, and for the sake of living beings, he cultivates the conduct of awakening. His wisdom and skillful means penetrate the treasury of dharmas, and he enters the place of profound wisdom without any attachments. Complying with their thoughts, he speaks of the dharma realm, passing through limitless compass which cannot be exhausted. Although his wisdom well enters, he is without a dwelling place, being without weariness, satiation, or attachments. He is born in the family of the Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time, and is certified to the first Kama's wondrous Dharma body. Universally, for the sake of the flocks of beings, he appears in many forms. Just like a magician, there is nothing he cannot do. Perhaps he manifests to the beginning his cultivation of the most supreme conducts, or maybe he manifests birth or living home, or he manifests realizing body under the tree, or for the sake of living beings, he manifests entry into Nirvana. The Bodhisattva abides in rare dramas. They are solely the states of the Buddha, not that of the two vehicles. His body, mouth, and mind have been completely renounced. According to various kinds of opportunities, he is able to manifest the Buddha dharmas which the Bodhisattva has obtained. If living beings would try to consider them, they would go mad. His wisdom enters the ultimate reality, and his mind is without obstruction. He universally manifests the first common's power of comfort and ease. In the world, he is un. Equaled, how much the more his ever increasing supreme conduct. Although he has not perfected all wisdom, yet he has already attained the first common's power of self mastery. He already abides in the ultimate path of the one vehicle, and deeply enters the subtly, uh, subtly, wondrous and most superior dharma. He knows well that what is and is not appropriate for living beings. In order to benefit them, he manifests spiritual penetrations. Commentary: The world systems of the ten directions are innumerable. World systems are very many. One could never describe them completely with words. In a single thought, he pervasively travels to them without exception. Although there are so many world systems, the Bodhisattva, in a single thought, is able to travel to all of them, benefiting living beings and making offerings to the Buddhas. He goes to all world systems. Below, he transforms living beings, and above, he seeks the Buddha path. Therefore, he makes offerings to all Buddhas. At the Buddha's places, he asks about the profound meanings. At the places of all the Buddhas of the ten directions, he asks about the deep, profound, and wondrous meanings. He thinks of all thus commons as a father. The Bodhisattva takes all the thus commons, that is, the Buddhas, as his own compassionate father. So he says he thinks of them like a father, and for the sake of living beings, he cultivates the conduct of awakening. Because he wants to benefit living beings, he cultivates all the practices of enlightenment. This practice can also be called feeling and pondering. Feeling and pondering means having a feeling of something and pondering over it. There are eight kinds of feelings that one contemplates. The first is the feeling of desire. This is the kind of state. Where you always want to obtain what your heart desires. The second is the feeling of hatred. The feeling of hatred is to always get angry. When one's fire of ignorance is very great, one is never able to take a look at oneself, but always gets upset with other people. The third 
is the feeling of arrogance. It is the urge of always wanting to trouble other people. One can also say that these first three are greed, hatred, and stupidity. The fourth is a feeling for one's relations. One always has thoughts of those whom one is close to, such as one's relations and friends, and this is not in harmony with the way. The fifth is the feeling、uh, for one's country. One is always concerned about whether one's country is at peace or at war. The sixth is the feeling of not wanting to die. One does not seem to know that one day one will die, so one accumulates a lot of wealth to live one in order to nourish and support one's life. The seventh is the feeling of class. This means one is always discriminating between high and low amidst the classes. This is high class or this is low class. The eighth is the feeling of contempt, which may also be called arrogance. One is all puffed up and haughty, and always feels that one is better than anyone else. These eight kinds of feelings are not in harmony with the way. Therefore, they must be transformed so that one becomes in harmony with that way. His wisdom and skillful means penetrate the treasury of dharmas. If one has the ample wisdom, then one's skillful expedient methods penetrate the true appearance of all dharmas, all the treasury of dharmas, and he enters the place of profound wisdom without any attachment. The Bodhisattva enters the Bodhisattva's most profound door of Brahma wisdom, yet he has no place of attachment. Complying with their thoughts, he speaks of the Dharma realm. He accords with living beings' thoughts and speaks of all the Dharma realms, passing through limitless compass which cannot be exhausted. He passes through immeasurable compass, such as a long time, which can never be exhausted. One could never finish speaking about them, although his wisdom well enters his without a dwelling place. Although his wisdom well enters the treasury of dharmas, still he has no dwelling place, and he is without weariness, satiation, or attachments. He feels there is nothing to be got at. It is. As though there is nothing to be hard at, it is as though there is nothing at all. For example, we who study the Buddha Dharma study for one day and feel as if we haven't gotten anything from it, or we may study for two days and also feel as if we haven't obtained anything up to the point that we may study for several years and still feel we haven't obtained anything. Yet, although we haven't obtained anything, we do not become weary. Whenever we feel we have studied enough Buddha Dharma and then become weary of it, this is not practicing the Bodhisattva path without attachments. Without the Bodhisattva path, without attachments, without attachments means one isn't attached to anything. One is not attached to what. One has or has not obtained. He is born in the family of the Buddhas of the three buildings of time. The Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind gets born within the family of the Buddhas of the three buildings of time and becomes a son of the Dharma King and is certified to the third commons wondrous Dharma body. He has realized the Buddha's wondrous Dharma nature body, generous solely for the sake. Of the fluffs of beings, he appears in many forms. For the sake of living beings everywhere, he appears in all kinds of bodies. Just like a magician, there is nothing he cannot do. He is just like a magician who can conjure up thousands of changes and ten thousand tricks. There is nothing he can't do. Perhaps he manifests to be beginning his cultivation of the most supreme conduct. Perhaps the Bodhisattva appears to be just beginning to cultivate the most supreme conduct of the Bodhisattva path, or maybe he manifests birth or living home. Maybe he appears as first being born in the world, 
or manifest living homes who can divert the way. Or he manifests realizing Bodhi under the tree. Beneath the Bodhi tree, he appears to realize the Buddha fruit upright of equal enlightenment. All for the sake of living beings, he manifests entry into Nirvana. Or perhaps he fears that living beings will be too dependent on him. That is why every Buddha who comes into the world enters Nirvana after a certain period of time has passed. The Bodhisattva abides in rare dharmas. The Bodhisattva abides in dharmas which rarely exist. They are solely the states of the Buddha, not that of the two vehicles. Everything he does is for the sake of states of the Buddha and not for the sake of the two vehicles, the sound hearers and those enlightened to conditions. His body, mouth and mind have been completely renounced. The Bodhisattva's three karmas of body, mouth and mind are pure. He is without the three evil karmas. According to various kinds of opportunities, he is able to manifest. When the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind teachers and transforms living beings, he uses all kinds of expedient Dharma doors. He speaks Dharma and manifests all bodies in accordance with what is appropriate. The Buddha Dharmas which the Bodhisattva has obtained, the various supreme Buddha Dharmas which the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind has obtained. If living beings would try to consider them, they would go mad. Living beings do not understand this state, so if they try to think of the Bodhisattva state, they would find rise to fear in their hearts and go crazy. His wisdom enters ultimate reality and his mind is without obstruction. The Bodhisattva's primal wisdom enters the substance of reality, and his mind is without impediments. He universally manifests the first common's power of comfort and ease. He is able to pervasively manifest the Buddha's free and easy spiritual powers. In the world, he is unequaled. Within the world, there is no one who can compare with him how much the more his ever-increasing supreme conduct, how much more his very supreme doors of conduct which increase day by day. Although he has not perfected all wisdom, although he has not obtained the Buddha's all wisdom, yet he has already attained the first common's power of self-mastery. Yet he has already attained the Buddha's free and easy spiritual powers. He already abides in the ultimate path of the one vehicle. He already dwells in the ultimate Buddha path of the one vehicle. And deeply enters the subtly wondrous and most superior dharma. He deeply enters the inconceivable most superior dharma doors. He knows well what is and is not appropriate for living beings. He well knows the hearts of living beings and the proper time he should cross them over. He knows whether or not it is the appropriate time. In order to benefit them, he manifests spiritual penetrations. Because he wishes to benefit living beings, he manifests all kinds of spiritual penetrations. Sutra, his division bodies pervasively fill up all shachas, emitting pure bright light which dispels the world's darkness. Just like a dragon king who raises a great cloud everywhere raining down, a wondrous rain so all are satisfied. He knows living beings are like an illusory dream because of, the force, because of the force of karma they always flow and turn. With great compassion and pity, he rescues and pulls them out. For their sakes, he explains the unconditioned pure Dharma nature. The Buddha's power is limitless and he is the same way. Just like space, it has no boundaries. In order to cause living beings to obtain liberation for a million compass, he diligently cultivates, yet does not become weary. Commentary His division bodies pervasively fill up all shachas. The Bodhisattva's division bodies pervade all Buddha's shachas, emitting pure bright light which dispels the world's darkness. 
He emits great wisdom light, causing all of the world's darkness to disperse. He is just like a dragon king who raises a great cloud. This is just like a dragon king in space who produces a great cloud, everywhere raining down a wondrous rain so all are satisfied. He rains down the wondrous Dharma rain, everywhere causing all living beings who are suffering from thirst to obtain nourishment. He knows living beings are like an illusory dream. The Bodhisattva sees that all living beings are the same as an illusory dream. Because of the force of karma, they always flow and turn. All living beings give rise to delusion, create karma, and undergo retribution. So that within the wheel of the six paths, they turn, coming and going. With great compassion and pity, he rescues and pulls them out. The Bodhisattva, with a heart of great compassion, pities all living beings and rescues them, so they leave suffering and attain happiness. For their sakes, he explains the unconditioned pure Dharma nature. For the sake of living beings, he teaches them about the unconditioned pure Dharma nature. The Buddha's power is limitless, and he is the same way. The Buddha's power is immeasurable and limitless, and the Bodhisattva's power in teaching, in teaching and transforming living beings is also immeasurable and limitless. Just like space, it has no boundaries. It is just like space, which has no boundaries or limits, in order to cause living beings to obtain liberation. In order to cause all living beings to obtain liberation, for a million compass, he diligently cultivates, yet does not become weary. For a long time, he diligently cultivates the Buddha Dharma, cultivating morality, samadhi, and wisdom, and destroying greed, hatred, and stupidity. In order to cause living beings to obtain liberation, he does not fear becoming weary. Due to the sufferings he undergoes, Sutra, with all kinds of meditations, the wondrous merit and virtue, he well cultivates the unsurpassed foremost karma, never renouncing all supreme conduct. He fixes his thoughts on the achievement of all wisdom. One body manifests measureless bodies, which totally pervade all world systems. His mind is pure, without discriminations. One thought of his power, which is difficult to conceive of, is like this. Commentary with all kinds of meditations, wondrous merit and virtue. He uses all kinds of samadhis of dhyana concentrations to cultivate all wondrous merit and virtue. Chan bliss serves as his food, and he is filled with the happiness of dharma. He well cultivates the unsurpassed foremost karma. Well cultivating means always going forward with vigor, without thinking of retreating. The unsurpassed foremost karma is the foremost karma of bringing forth the body mind and cultivating the path of a bodhisattva, never renouncing all supreme conduct. He cultivates all dharma doors, and he never thinks of renouncing the bodhisattva path. And he fixes his thoughts on the achievement of all wisdom. He fixes his thoughts on all living beings in order to teach and transform them. Therefore, he is determined to realize all wisdom and the wisdom of all modes. One body manifests measureless bodies, which totally pervade all world systems. One body is able to manifest immeasurable bodies, and immeasurable bodies are able to become one body. These kinds of wondrous functioning of spiritual penetrations fills us all world systems everywhere and is the manifestation of a bodhisattva's spiritual attainments. His mind is pure without discriminations. The bodhisattva who practices the path of teaching and transforming living beings does not discriminate living beings in good. And bad or right and wrong, he wants to teach and transform them all, no matter how good or bad, or right or wrong they are. Within a single thought, he is able to totally fill up all the Buddha lands in the ten directions, and 
three periods of time. One thought of his power, which is difficult to conceive of, is like this: his inconceivable power is just this way. <laughs>